Georgia Cities, we are back and we are so excited to see you in person at GMA's 2021 annual convention here in beautiful Savannah. This past year has been a lot for all of us, from the COVID-19 pandemic, economic downturn, and fighting against racial injustices and dealing with our own personal problems. But one thing has remained constant, the strength of Georgia Cities. I couldn't agree more, Kelly. As a new member to the GMA team and a former reporter, I've had the privilege of watching local leaders boldly lead Georgians through hardships, all while keeping hope alive and residents informed. Amanda, that is so true. It's been inspiring to watch our leaders do what they've done for so long, lead by example, which is why we've themed this year's convention, The Spirit of Cities, Connecting, Collaborating, Caring. The GMA team has worked so hard to highlight this theme through various trainings, networking opportunities, and more during this year's convention. But before we made it here to Savannah, we visited a few city leaders on our road to convention who are living the spirit of cities. Join us as we learn about a selfless mayor pro tem caring for his community and get an inside look at the power of collaboration and more. We're, We're off, off to celebrate, celebrate the spirit, spirit of cities. cities. So today we're here with Douglasville Police Chief Gary Sparks to talk about uh, how his department connects with the community. Chief, could you tell me about the DCOP program that your department engages in with the public? Yes, uh, the Douglasville Community Outreach Program is one where we have started several programs to reach across the bridge to bridge the community police gap. We know that uh, we're one with the community and you can't have no us versus them because them is us. So we must engage our community in order to keep our community safe. And so I know it's been a challenging year for police across the country with protests and with increased crime rates um, and, and some kind of anti-police sentiment in some groups. Um, how has your department dealt with this and tried to keep a good relationship with the community through all of this? Well, we, uh, we've had some protests here. What we try to do is get out in front of it. Uh, we, we meet with the people who want to protest and make sure that their protest is going to be successful. And then they see that, wow, uh, police is really trying to help us do this correctly. Then they see and understand all the things that we're doing in the community. That we're engaged in the, in the community in a positive way. It's one of the greatest things you do is engage the community in a non-adversarial way. And, and uh, we, this is 90% of what we do. So we're just grateful for the opportunity to serve in that capacity. So could you tell me how you connect with your community? Yeah, I mean, we get I personally get out in the community, and I love to go to every event they have, anybody has. Social media, trying to go to their doors, hold community events, town hall, forums. I drive the school bus every day to connect with the kids. We finally have some new restaurants opening in Centerville, so I'm trying to eat my way through Centerville. That's one of the ways I've been getting out and seeing people. And, we are here in the city of Sugar Hill. That's right. We're here on one of our stops on the road to convention. Today we're going to talk to Mayor Pro Tem Taylor Anderson. He decided to donate his monthly city salary to nonprofits around the community after seeing the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Let's hear more about why. When I saw your story about you giving up your salary to charities, it was phenomenal, really heartwarming, and spoke to the spirit of cities in our convention theme. So let's just start. Share with us the motivation behind why you decided to do that. Really a, a, a difficult year, right? 2020 was such a difficult year for everybody. Uh, so many different issues came up. So many different needs came up for those in our communities. And so my wife Liz and I were talking about ways we could individually give back. Yeah. And um, what we came up with was donating our council salary for this year. We're looking at all sorts of different nonprofits that are local here in Sugar Hill that are helping those directly in our community. Amazing, just raising awareness in itself and like giving time in that, those areas of influence seem, seem like really good things to do. Yeah, there are so many ways that, that you can give back that don't cost anything. And that can be just raising awareness for nonprofits in your community. Let the community know you have this opportunity as an elected official, you have this platform. Use that platform to highlight those that are doing good in your community. It could be nonprofits, it could be just an individual who is working hard. Talk about them, find their story, tell their story, 
and highlight those people that are doing so much good work in your community. Can you tell me how you care for your community? We supported our, our first responders. We did the summer food program. Trying to work with some of our code enforcement folks to find a difference between the people who can't take care of their property versus the people who won't. So rather than just writing people tickets, but trying to provide them resources. We want to learn more and we want to improve our knowledge and that's why we're here. We're here today on beautiful Lake Chattoog with Mayor Liz Ardialis of Hiawassee and Mayor Andrea Gibby of Young Harris. Uh, we're here to talk to them about how they work together really closely. Their two cities work together so closely that sometimes they're referred to as Young Owassee. So I really want to hear more about how you guys um, have started uh, or, or got your collaboration started. So can you tell me how this came about? Now the real story is this. So Liz came to me <laughs> one time and she said, listen, we're going to hire a, a, a a director of economic development and I was like oh can we afford it and no. she goes <laughs> no we can't but together and if we bring in Cliff we might be able to pull this off and that's exactly what that's we what happened so we went to our commissioner and we involved him and we hired somebody three years ago that has done great work for us uh, we have now an economic development director for the entire area we have a downtown development authority we have a joint development authority and all of those have come from the efforts of being able to hire Denise McKay, who is our Economic Development Director. Well, you know, in our rural community, since we're so small, and again, so close to each other, if we don't work together, it becomes a big problem. You become disjointed, and that's not anything we ever want. I mean, I, I think she's right on target. I, I think that it, it collaboration is the biggest thing that human beings can do. If we sit down at the table, if we share a cup of coffee, or adult beverage, then we can we can we can help each other, sure. and it doesn't matter. We can you know there's no lines here, and we just help each other. That's all. That's what it's all about. Try to work together, and try to find a common ground. I think that's how most uh, success stories really happen. Making partnerships yes. matter. That's yes. all. The more we work together, the, the the happier Warner Robins is. The better it is for Centerville, and the better Centerville is doing, the better it is for Warner Robins. So yeah. We've seen some amazing examples of the spirit of cities all across Georgia in our road to convention. Now we're at our final stop. Welcome to Savannah. <laughs>